Hey, it's Glamham. I'm not a scientist. I'm a former stand-up comedian, but I'm interested in science and all th- frequencies. So you know how we've been having crazy weather? Well, this is Jay from Plasma Channel on YouTube, and look what he presented in his last video. I found it interesting. Let me know what you think. High-voltage nebulography. You know, high-voltage physics opens an entire sandbox of beautiful phenomena. Pulling energy out of the clouds, this one was actually really cool. This 20 kilovolt battery-powered Wimshurst is ideal because, as you can see, totally harmless. The electrical ground is attached directly to the water and the high-voltage positive to your body. Mmm, pretty sci-fi. Look how he is affecting the fog with a charge passing through his body with his finger acting like a magic wand. Let's look at that again. Look at what he's able to do with just a small charge in that. Perhaps the most intriguing of all though, a flat palm placed just over the fog creates a clear vortex. He comes up with three theories. First is ionic wind. This is a loose term and it's more of a beam of ions constrained by an electric field. Then an electron tunnel. Tunnel discharge and dielectric barrier discharges are examples of this. There's the beam yeah, and it's a hair thin like. beam for the uh, most part. Simulations that Chris ran indicate that the particular setup that I'm using leads to a highly concentrated electric field between my fingertip and the grounded fog layer. Highly concentrated electric fields, what do they do? Well, they lead to the ionization of air. In ham radio, we use the ionosphere to achieve our incredible, magical, long-distance communications. All those extra ions in the ionosphere collect our signals and let them bounce around the world so we can reach thousands of miles away. Hmm, let's carry on. Propagation of intense catastrophe beams in... Catastrophe beams are specifically structured light rays, which are characterized by an ability to maintain their shape over vast distances, with the effect of causing an ionized air channel, which is self-focusing, not unlike this effect. His third theory is forced condensation. Actually explains what's going on in the fog layer itself. Several studies tested the effect that high voltage electrical fields have on fog with the agreed upon result being that it is possible to disperse fog by applying a positive corona discharge. So a positive electrical addition to fog will break it up. At least that's how I'm hearing it. But what exactly is a corona? Corona is a term that most people have heard of in the power industry, but not everybody knows what it is. Simply stated, it's the breakdown or energizing of the air around the conductor. Here's some footage from a camera specially designed to detect corona. All the white spots you see are corona, but it's more concentrated in certain areas. So that positive high voltage charge causes all the microscopic droplets of water floating around in the fog, aka that's what the fog is, well it causes that to condense together into larger droplets which then fall. So if I'm hearing this correctly, he's saying that by adding a positive charge into, say, a cloud of fog, you can make the fog turn into rain and fall. That sounds handy. Some farms use this to their advantage. By running high voltage cables down the length of their fields, they're able to take advantage of a morning fog, condensing it into a quick shower, and this allows crop growth in otherwise impossibly arid land. Again, look at just the tiny charge he's using and what he's able to do in this fog. Imagine if he had more power. Oh, I love that. Yep, yep. As the ion beam and the ionic wind is penetrating the air, and then it slams into the ground. We found a study which imaged actual streams of ionic wind, and their photos really closely match Chris's simulation. Since the fog layer contacts the water, it acts as a highly sensitive electrical ground. At DC voltages above 20 kilovolts, three events occur. One, a positively charged fingertip ionizes the air, leading to a small volume of ionic wind. Two, this ionic wind is then focused by a highly concentrated electric field, forming an ion bridge between finger and fog. And three, at the point of contact with the fog, that concentrated electric field causes instant forced condensation and also brings with it a small volume of airflow. That was Jay's incredible research with the help of his scientist friend Chris. So now I went off to do some of my own research. I came upon this article, Demonstration of a Remotely Piloted Atmospheric Measurement and Charge Release 
platform for geoengineering. Sounds like a drone? Aircraft charge emitters. So in this journal, they talk about having an aircraft with this scientific equipment integration. Commercially available Skywalker X-8 fixed wing aircraft. Okay, let's see what's next. The X-8 is capable of the long range operations required to fly into clouds, including an ability to climb to altitudes of three kilometers. Here's what one of those little puppies look like. See the cloud sensor and the charge emitter location? An aircraft with instruments can locate cloud regions and deliver a charge in a controllable and monitored manner of either or both polarities to increase the volume of cloud. This next part kind of made me feel a little creepy. What if they used an aircraft swarm? Implementing an aircraft swarm with multiple aircraft following the same flight pattern and simultaneously releasing charge across a range of altitudes. Hmm. This sounds like it could be be effective in, say, affecting clouds on a larger scale. Here's the acknowledgements. It did catch my eye. UAE. Isn't that where they just had a big flood? <laughs> Electricity in the atmosphere has long been supposed to influence clouds of water droplets. So it sounds like you just have to charge clouds to make them rain. Thanks to Jay and Chris at Plasma Channel for their incredible work. This is pretty interesting, especially given what we're seeing in the world weather-wise. Let me know in the comments what you think. Take care.